Hello everybody. I am on a bike ride this morning, was praying down by the river and uh, stopped off here, found a ledge at the Dream Center, Peoria. Didn't really plan to stop here, but I wanted to do the next video for 1 John chapter 3 verse 1, which says, See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we will be called children of God and such we are and for this reason the world does not know us because it did not know him now see how great a love that we should be called children of God and that's something that uh, really we need to tackle in the next coming this year and immediately now is our identity in Christ being children and what does that mean to be a child of God and really that's who we are is children of God and children have an inheritance and the kingdom and we are called to resemble the kingdom of God in all that we do what does that mean and I can try different analogies to try to explain what that means, but that's, this is something that I'm finally grasping in the last few years, is uh, my identity in Christ. So I used to uh, kind of have this guilty conscience and just thinking that I was just a sinner and, and thought to, like, when Christ returns and I'm in heaven, then I'll be free and then I could be a, a truly uh, the child and that's when it's going to happen, but in the few, last few years, I realized that is now. I, because uh, that's the reality of how God sees me as a child. That's why Jesus came, is so that we can resemble his kingdom now, that we could be temples of his right now, and that we would be the body, because uh, in, uh, in the body of, that was my alarm going off, but in the body of Christ, like, I'm in the, I'm a part of my father's household. My dad's name is Ronald. And so I am his legacy going on. And I have a lot of tendency of my father that just was passed down from me. And the way I think a lot of comes from him. My sense of humor definitely comes from him. And we are to reflect, as children of God, the character of our father, our true heavenly father. Uh, this, we, uh, our old self has died on the cross. That doesn't mean that we abandon everything from our from our past like our family and and god gave us that but he is the true father because when this world is over we're going to be living forever with him and that's the true reality for eternity this is the temporal thing uh, that we have here and so what does it mean to be a child of god it means we are exhibiting his uh, nature in the world so when people see us that we're about the family business, the family business of healing and saving and walking in his image, which is uh, we want to get to know our father more. We should want to know his, his thoughts and know his will so that we can exhibit it so that people can get to healing and so that we can be about our father's business. And it's not something that we just turn on. Uh, he gives us the ability to do that. When we draw close to him in relationship, he will take over. It's a, it's a humble relation, humbled uh, posture to get in on what the Father wants and his thoughts. He, he wants that, the, us to come after him, and that's what we're doing here, is learning the scripture and giving him something to work with, his truth, putting them, getting them in our heart so that when we go through things in life that we can, uh, they, they can come to our, our memories and he can work with them, and then they get new life in us and then our our hearts are being transformed little by little into the father and so then when situations and trials come up in our life we don't act as a child of this world and just react to things as someone that doesn't have hope we react with that hope that we have and, and that knowledge that we have that we are kingdom citizens that we are uh, children of god and that nothing on this earth is can overtake us because the earth has been overtaken. Now, 
uh, the last part of that verse kind of ties into last week's, uh, where it says, the world does not know us because it did not know him. It is God's intention that the world does know who we are. That is his intent. That's what he wants. He says, they will know by the love that we have for each other. And it, it's, it's through that love that the world knows that uh, Jesus came to this earth and that God loved us even as he loved him. It is through this relationship. It is through our, our coming into uh, Christ and through the love of us uh, reciprocating that he gave to us and that realization of what he did and then us showing that love back. He says, uh, last week it was the glory that I had given uh, them, the, uh, the glory you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, just as we are one, I and them, and you and me, that they may be perfected in unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and loved them, even as you loved me. And in our verse this week, it says that the world does not know them because they did not know me. So that is the truth. But God wants the world to know who he is. And it's by us realizing our place as children of God and taking up that mantle and, and, uh, draw, and it, it starts with drawing close to God, simply drawing close to him and seeking his presence. He wants people who worship him in spirit and in truth. And because God is spirit, and so his presence is spirit. And so to draw close to him, learn his nature, and then... Uh, Get, uh, his compassion will start to be your compassion for people. And then when you see people who are in need or, or you see their hurts, they'll give you discernment and give you little downloads and everything. Hello, ma'am. How are you doing? God bless you. You have a blessed day. So just exhibiting that heart into wherever you go and your speech will start having salt in it, which you'll uh, in it, which is a flavoring the atmosphere around you, that saltiness. And so, and and that's that's the truth that is within you because you're speaking God's truth. And there's freedom in truth. There's life in there, and you become that light of life wherever you go. But it starts with seeking His presence, because how do you know how to be a son if you don't know the Father. Like, uh, I, that's in the, a, a huge issue in my community is fatherlessness. And that's a huge issue in Christ, too. Uh, we have a lot of people who treat God as like just a religious practice, they treat Christianity as a religious practice, and they're not seeking the Father, the presence. And I think really need, we need some people to rise up that know how to seek the presence, that exhibit the presence of God, to let people know that there's more. There's more to this than just cognitive knowledge. There's a relationship, and that's cliche in the church to say it's about it's a relationship, but it's seeking that presence, and it's, a, it's, it's, it's real. It's real to seek the presence of God. And then you start being transformed by that presence. You start to resemble and walk like your father and talk like your father. And you start to be about the family business to the point where you you come to his throne and, and you come in boldness. And you got refrigeration refrigerator privileges. You can go into the refrigerator and grab out a Snapple and just start drinking of it because all that is his is yours. And... When you, the, the, you start thinking his thoughts and knowing his will, and so when things come up, you start have his compassion comes through you, and so then his words come through you, and then you're giving all your emotions and everything over to him because you're so submitted that when you speak and what you feel is the feelings and the talk of the path of the of the father, and then healing comes. Healing comes. God has come for healing. So that is, we are children of God. See how great the love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children, and such we are. And for this reason, the world does not know us.
because they didn't know him, but they're going to know.